Hello, this is my video for International Tabletop Day. If you don't know what Tabletop Day is, then follow the uh, link in the description below, or to the side, or above, or, or wherever I choose to put it. Um, it's, uh, it was a web series on the Geek and Sundry channel called Tabletop, or with Will Wheaton, where they play, or little get their words out, where they play uh, board games, group of people together, and they play board games, and they record it, and they put it on the internet. And it's extremely successful, which doesn't sound like a formula that would be successful, but it is, and I watch it a lot. So they, then they started International Tabletop Day, which is basically an excuse, uh, a day for an excuse to get together and play lots of board games. I think this is the third year. I think this is the third one. And it hasn't been going that long. But it's kind of become a thing. Uh, Saturday the 11th of April. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I am working uh, on, that, on this day. So I, I cannot be playing games, which is fine. I have to do some work. I've got to be a sound recordist uh, on a little film. So that's fine. But... I can put out this video, video blog, which is going to be a review to talk about my favourite game, what I call my favourite game um, that I've ever played, and, and I really love it, um, and the detectives amongst you may have realised that this game is Small World. Small World is an area control, very light war game, uh, where you have, everyone has a, a unique army that they have to spread across the board, represented by these little um, cardboard tokens, so they have to spread across the board and collect these coins, which are points essentially. Here we have the five player map, this is the largest map set up, and you can see there's um, already some cardboard on the board, there's little mountain tokens and that go over the mountain spaces, and then there's these uh, lost tribes, which are kind of the sort of native people I guess that start on the board, that you have to defeat in order to conquer their territories. And you can see the board is divided up into several areas, there's three water areas, and then the, the land is divided into uh, le uh, grassland and swamps and farmland and forests, uh, and the mountains obviously. And you want to conquer these different sections, these individual sections, in order to score points, because each section is worth a point, one point, plus um, any bonuses that you can get from it. Uh, and the way you do this is every location costs two men plus one per piece of cardboard in it. So say I wanted to conquer this territory, I'd have to send in two guys there, two to conquer the land, and then one for the lost tribe in there, so one for the extra piece of cardboard. And then they've conquered that territory. Then I can move on to the next space, which again is two for the actual space, but then an extra one. Um, for the cardboard, so for the mountain. The difference here obviously is that the, the Lost Tribe was defeated, whereas the mountain stays on the board. So when I stack up my guys, uh, in this the farmland here where the Lost Tribe was, I've got three guys, whereas on the mountain I've got three guys plus a mountain, so it's actually a defence of four, because the mountain basically counts as my defence in, uh, in that instance. But here on the left hand side of the board we can see that we've got the races set up, the way this works is there's a big old stack of uh, race tokens that to get shuffled at the beginning of the game and then you deal out five uh, randomly downwards. And then there's power tokens which similarly they are shuffled up as best you can because they're quite uh, not the easiest thing to shuffle. And then five of them are dealt out one for each race which you can see fit together with the race tokens quite well to create a special power and a uh, wood that goes with each race. Then starting with the first player you get to pick your race. Uh, the way this works is from the stack, if you want to take the bottom ones, if you want to take the cobolds, that's free. Whereas if you, but if you want to skip the cobolds, you have to pay them. So you have to pay a coin to the cobolds if you want to take the dwarves. Or have to, if I want to take a, the skeletons, I have to pay a coin to the cobolds and a coin to the dwarves. If I want to take the wizards, I have to pay a coin to everyone. So all five races, and then I could take the wizards at the top. Um, so there might be something you really want at the top, but then you have to decide whether it's worth the coins, because coins are your points at the end of the game. So it's worth uh, losing the points in order to take the whatever might be super powerful at the top of this stack. But you can always take any of the six that's currently on display. And then if say if I say if I and then say if I took the dwarves in the end, so if I took the dwarves, everything would then shuffle down, and then the wizards would shuffle down to replace that top spot, and we'd reveal a new thing. So we've got the heroic gypsies, that's the new thing that we've revealed at the top, and then the the next player would get to pick uh, their race and it would keep going and going and going. Um and, and new races would cycle through. But the interesting thing here is that whilst you will take your arm and you will spread out across the land. Uh, eventually your army will become weak or you'll become yeah you know, they will become useless in some way they'll have spread too far or the other players will have beaten them up too much in which case you then retire that army then you pick a whole new army so you go back to the stack and and, and then do the same thing again you pick another race and a power and uh, you take that army and then you start conquering the land all over again which is uh, which is pretty cool so you can get through probably maybe three or four armies uh, every game which is a uh, uh, fairly uh, unique Let's have a quick look at some examples here. So we've got the seafaring kobolds at the bottom. Um, seafaring means you can conquer the sea locations. Normally you can't do that, but they can conquer and hold and score points for the seas and the lake, which is quite useful. The kobolds you see don't really have a power. They just have a lot of them. So you can see there's 11 compared to the dwarves' three. Um, but the kobolds are 
power or penalties you might look at it is that they can't be alone so you can't leave a lone kobold to um defend a the territory they have to be in pairs at least um but then there are a lot of them so it's not always a, no it's, it's kind of just a balance there um the corrupt dwarves we can see the dwarves they like the mines so the dwarves get an extra point for every mine symbol that they control but you can see you only get three of them um so they have a lower number uh, but and they're all, but they're corrupt so every time somebody attacks you that they have to pay you a coin um because of your corruption also worth looking at here at the very top of the stack was the bivouacking wizards so if you wanted to pay all for them the bivouacking means you get these bivouac tokens and if you can see that it's a little uh, tent with a wooden fence on the actual do you get these little bivouac tokens that you can then place on the board uh, with your wizards which is basically a bonus piece of cardboard so you get five of them that you can uh, place wherever you like and and yeah as i said it's an extra piece of cardboard that again costs an extra thing to conquer so when the other players are trying to attack you you've got that little extra level of defense to have to spend an extra man to do so and the wizards, you see, get an extra coin for um, holding magic territories. But other things, they've got the, the trolls get these uh, troll caves, um, which do the same effect. Uh, you can build, there's fortresses that can be built as another power. And there's a few other things. There's um, this dragon here. You can get Dragon Master, and which allows you to put the dragon on the board. And whatever territories the dragon's in cannot be conquered. It's, it's completely, I mean, the, the dragon defeats everything in the territory, and then it defends the territory. So when you've picked your um, your race, your special power and your race combo, you come over here to your, get your cardboard tokens. This isn't all of them, this is just one tray. There's, there's two trays because um, we've got all the expansions going on here. But yeah, you come over and you get uh, your cardboard tokens. You can see the wizards there. And you get a number depending on what you've taken. So we've got, uh, we can see bivouacking here has a five, so that's five. And the wizards, they have also got a five. So that's five and five, which means you get ten wizards. So the first round of the game, you get 10 wizards. Um, which again, you have to consider some of the races start with less. We saw the dwarves only started with a, with a three on them. So that can be a bit harsh sometimes. But let's say I took the dwarves. I took the corrupt dwarves this turn. So I'll get my dwarf tokens out of the, of the stack here. Uh, and we can see that the dwarves are three and four. So that makes seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you put the, dis uh, put the extras back. So I've now got seven dwarves to conquer the land. Um, so it takes two per territory. So I'll put two in there. Because uh, that's a mine, that's good for me, that's good for the dwarves. Uh, two in there, and then that leaves me three left over, so I'll move into here, and I'll uh, defeat this uh, this guy here. So two for the territory and one for the one for the lost tribe to conquer that. So that leaves me, after his first turn, with one, two, three, and one mine, so four. So I score four points this first turn with uh, my corrupt dwarves. And then the next player will pick their race, and they will take their stack and, and charge the map as I did. One more thing you can do is that the last conquest you make in a round is that you can gamble for reinforcements. So say I've got these two territories here uh, with my dwarves and there's this one that will cost me three to take here. But say I've only got uh, two dwarves left or say I've only got one dwarf left. That's all I've got. So I'll put him in there. I really want to take that territory. So I'll put him in there and uh, then I can roll this dice. And you'll see it's got uh, three blank sides and then it's got uh, a one, a two and a three on it. So I need three in total, so I've got one dwarf, it means I need to roll a two at least in order to conquer that territory to give me a total of three, and no, I've rolled a blank. So uh, that dwarf failed to conquer that territory, and then I would just put him back uh, with another stack, he retreats. You should always have all your cardboard, mostly you'll always have all your cardboard on the board, because you're allowed to redistribute and, and bolster up your defences as need be. This game has a lot of cardboard, there's a lot of um, cardboard components um, going on here, which sounds kind of cheap, but it really works for this game. One of the great things it has actually is, is this is, that you can see here the five player board here. If you turn this over, there's a four player board on the side. And also it comes with this fold out, which is a three player board on one side and a two player board on the other side. So it actually comes with four boards specifically de designed for each um, number of players. There's a sixth board as well, uh, a six player board, um, but it's a little uh, pricey in my opinion. But yeah, no, the, the main game comes plays two to five and it comes with a board for each set so that the game balances itself. It's, it's very clever, very, very good idea. Um, with a lot of games like this, you have to sort of chop up the board and, and move it and you know you can't go in certain areas or there's certain things you can't do, whereas they just solve it with, I mean, by putting you know, various different varieties of board in. As I've said, the cardboard tokens actually actually work really well. Um, you could have done it with you know hundreds and hundreds of models, but it would have been ludicrously expensive. And and to be honest, it do, just doesn't need it. it. I don't think I don't think models would add anything to this game. It was a deluxe version that where some things are in, in model form, the um, castles and things come as little uh, plastic models. 
but I really don't think it's going to add anything to the game. I think uh, the game's quite elegant as it is. Strange as it might seem, I don't actually own this game. Uh, this is a friend's copy. A friend of mine bought this game sort of sight unseen, we'd never played it before, uh, and I just loved it. Um, but because it was always me and him, almost, well, in fact, I think it's pretty much always been me and him playing it, and then uh, some of our other friends playing games, I've never had a reason to buy it because we've always it's always been there, it's always been his. Um, I will eventually, I imagine, collect me, make my own, get my own collection, but for now, it just was unnecessary. As you can see, I've borrowed his. He has um, most, a lot of the expansions, not all of the expansions, but he has most of them. Um, the one thing he has that we play with is the uh, what's it called, the Tales and Legends deck. Now, if I was making my own collection, I probably think I probably wouldn't bother to get this. Now, this is. What it does is it has a bunch of random effects that come in every round. You, at the start of every round, you turn over the top card uh, and a random effect happens. So we've got uh, a Tremor, all conquests require one more race token this turn, or Barbarian Invasion, races that arrive on the board receive an additional three race tokens. So you know, you, well, your new races um, storm in with extra people and there's some, you know, so there, there's, there's a quite a lot of them. You're only ever gonna draw, you know, maybe 10 of them. Um, I think that's the most number of rounds that there is. Uh, but yeah, no, there, there's a loads of them and they, and they add a little bit of randomness, a little bit of variety to the game. But I could take it or leave it, to be honest. I'm, I'm not, I mean, it's not a deal, but we always play with it and it's not a deal big for me. I've never said, hey, let's not use that. I'm always happy enough to use it. But uh, I don't think I'd bother to buy it myself. I think I, 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 if I was getting the other expansions, I'd definitely get like, the, the race expansions because I, never, I haven't yet to see one that's um, particularly bad. But yeah, I'm just I'm just not that that bothered by it. I, I don't feel that it, it, it adds a huge amount. It adds a, uh, I think it adds a layer of complication to a game that was quite elegant. So why is this my favourite game? Why do I say this is my favourite game of all time? Well, I think I'm I'm quite into territory controlling games in general. I have quite a few territory control games. Um, it just seems to be something that I like. I was into Risk when I was younger and didn't know any better. Um, <laughs> And then, and then that you know kind of evolved, I guess, into um, Warhammer. So I've got the war gaming. I've got the war gaming in me. Um, I, I do enjoy that, and I do like playing those sorts of video games and everything else as well. And and this is so simple, and it just t takes that formula and really makes the most of it. Really, it really squashes it down into an easily digestible form that that I can teach. Is super simple to teach this game. Um, it, I've don't think I know anyone who doesn't enjoy it. It's it's, it's kind of fun and the and the variety um, makes means that it's uh, you know you can you can play it over and over and over again. I always I'll always finish a game of this and just I just quite happily play it again. So yeah, it hits a lot of what I've I've always liked um, in games as well as well as just being the in many ways the simplest form of that sort of game. I mean the game's not perfect. Um, some of the races and the powers aren't great and if they happen to come out together then that's just they're just annoying there's a dead weight um that everyone wants to skip similarly some of the conveys are so powerful that if somebody gets hold of it they just they just storm the board i remember i managed to get hold of um the ghouls and then i immediately got hold of the, the like the rampaging amazons or something and and just took over half the board all by myself so it's it, you know sometimes that can happen but it tends to balance itself out. Everyone starts picking on that player. I didn't actually didn't actually win that game, even though I completely stole the first half of the game. I didn't actually win. Um, but yeah, no, it, 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 I've never seen it unbalanced. I've often seen it come really, really close at the end. Uh, regardless of everything else, it always it was always quite a tight game normally between the top two people. I do own. Whilst I don't own this is my friend's game, I do own Small World Underground, um, which is kind of a uh, spin-off game. It's basically the same game with different races, different board, a couple of different rules um, and some added extras which I really like. There's the added extra of you can find these artifacts in special places on the board um, which are sort of hidden uh, and they can be they can be really powerful. And I, I really like what they add to the game so if I, I you know, quite happily mix this in with with the small world um, but yeah, I, I, I just because I love the game so much, I wanted some sort of copy, and it seemed pointless buying the game again, as I said. So I bought the underground version. Um, slightly less recognisable elements of this, like here, when you get the base game, you get your elves and your dwarves and your giants and your kind of your fantasy, your, your wizards, your fantasy people and races that that you recognise. It's like playing like a sort of weird um, mashup of that the old Warhammer and stuff like that. Whereas the underground is slightly more. 
unusual. They've got, they've got, they've got none of the same races of this. So they've got mummies and and uh, shroom people, mushroom people, and things like that. So it's kind of and you know giant spiders, and so it's not quite so um, iconically that sort of fantasy race. It's a bit more um, magical and mystical. But that's fine. That's fine. It's just that I I think find that um, new people might be slightly more drawn to the recognisable fantasy traits of being able to play the dwarves or the elves or whatever like that. So why should you give Small World a try? Well if you like the territory control war games, um, Small World looks, because it's kind of got a jokey cartoony style to it, so it looks like a simplified version of those games, but it's really not. It's actually very strategic and there's a, quite a lot going on. You've got There's a lot to think about. Um, but yeah, no, it's, 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 at the same time it is boiled down to its grassroots if you take your people and you take as much territory as you can and when you can't do that anymore you take some new people and do it and you know, it, is, it is just take as much territory as you can is basically the objective of the game you know, score as much bonus points and everything else um, so it, you know, it is simple in that context but I, I still think it, it's it's you can you can really dig into it you can really you, know, you really get deep and really um, strategize and yeah no it's, it's just it's just a great balance of everything. So I would say if you're into your war, your territory control type games, um, then this is a really good one to have around if you just want to to um, get out with some people who maybe aren't into those sorts of games or maybe aren't into games that much at all. Small World is a great one to have. It's nice and quick. It's nice and simple. You can really explain it quite easily. Um, and and you can you can slowly sort of get people into that genre. You can you can kind of almost trick them into uh, to getting into the, into the, the genre that way. Um, but yeah, no, Small World, thoroughly recommend it. I uh, hope this has been interesting. hope maybe you've uh, it's, in, it's inclined you to give Small World a try. Um, and yeah, I hope you uh, found that vaguely enjoyable. Uh, that's the end of me today. I will be hopefully playing some, uh, some games before too long. I might try and get a game of Small World in before I have to give this uh, back to my friend. <laughs> Do check out my channel, check out my videos. Um, I'm talking about other board game things. I'm going to start blogging about... Um, doing a series about the short film I'm working on at the moment uh, of trying to get made from that I sort of wrote co-wrote with, with a, a friend of mine and yeah I'm going to start talking about that I'm going to talk more about the game I'm designing because I've designed a game which is some videos on that that's getting into the it's sort of final time it's going to get a kickstart on the go for that soon um, and then yeah that's 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 all, all I got there's plenty more going on there's plenty more follow the links like I say tabletop links and things like that and uh, play some table play some small world if you can you know, take the opportunity. Um, today, April the 11th. It might be a bit late if you're watching this now. But uh, yeah, it is International Tabletop Day. If you did not know, it's, an ex it's a day for playing board games. So why not just play some board If you're watching this randomly, just go on, play some games. Why not? Find them. Just do it somehow. Figure it out. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Follow me on Facebook. and No, follow me on Twitter. Find me on Facebook. Whatever. There's all this other. There's all the links in the thing below. Just look at them. Read. Do some reading. Reading is good. I'm going to stop myself before I uh, ramble on any more like an inane moron. So that's it. The end. <laughs>